It's time! It's time! It's Jam Dummy Time! Hi guys, it's that time again. Step the ring with the greatest faction in podcast history. Just Freak Wrestling, the JFW podcast, hosted by Travis D. Guys, if you remember on the last episode, I was able to sit down with Hunter Payne and kind of talk about the issues he had, not only with uh, Pow Entertainment, but also some of the people that uh, he's kind of had some uh, altercations with, whether it be physically or verbally or whatever it is. Um, and uh, to kind of keep with the tradition of getting everyone's point of view, you know, so it's not one-sided. We're not hearing one side of the story. We're getting everyone's perspective. I'm sitting down with somebody who uh, actually I have known for quite some time. Uh, believe it or not, this is the guy who taught Travesty how to do a fucking arm bar at Elite Pro Dojo almost 13 years ago, uh, 12 years ago, somewhere in there. Um, back in the day, I knew this guy as Nubby Jones, but uh, I think you guys know him as Turtle now. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. I still hear the Nubby Jones, though, every once in a while. Well, that, that is the thing, man. Like, when I, when I first saw you, uh, it was about a year ago or something. I think you're sitting in the audience at Southland. I'm sitting there talking to my co-host, uh, Dizzle J. I was like, I think I know that guy. I'm pretty sure that's Nubby Jones. And he's like, his name's Nubby. I'm like, I never knew your real name. Like, for the entire time we were training, no one ever called you by your real name. It was always Nubby Jones, which I w- we're going to talk about Elite Pro uh, in this show, too. Just kind of like just reminisce about some stuff, because I still don't think people believe that I actually trained as a pro wrestler. It was just me talking. <clears throat> um, but I want to tackle like the real shit first, the stuff that's going on right now, because I think that's what everyone's like trying to look at and try to figure out exactly what the hell is going on as far as Southland Championship Wrestling. So if it's okay with you, we'll back burner the Elite Pro stuff to the end, but I want I want to kind of tackle everything, that especially has happened like at Rock and Wrestling, uh, the uh, I think it was called Arctic Takeover. I can't remember the names of all these fucking shows, but uh, <laughs> if that's okay with you. I kind of like to start with that stuff first. That's fine. Is it fine? You're very easy going, man, and that's what I appreciate about you. you get, I try not, you, not to make things difficult. I mean, why not? I, go, I do what the host does. <clears throat> well, I appreciate that. That's 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 very admirable of you. But that's because you're a good guy, and I don't, I don't get the, the the comments and stuff that certain people have uh, against you. I don't understand it. It's got to be their own bitterness, and we're gonna talk about the power hour as well here. Not that I mentioned bitterness, but. The first thing I want to talk about is uh, you you uh, came into SCW as a referee, I think, 20, this year, 2022. Uh, maybe the end of 2021, somewhere in yeah. there, but fairly. Yeah, end of 2021. Yeah. Um, so, first off, how how does SCW kind of, like, feel as as a company to kind of start in? I mean, obviously, you've been around a lot of other places, Crash Tested Wrestling, uh, you started out as a uh, referee for Elite Pro Wrestling. Um, so how how has how it been in Southland Championship Wrestling, first of all? Let's get that out of the way. I mean, it's been good. I mean, to, I was actually going to the shows, you know, prior to my debut. I actually did one battle royal um, back in 2018 when things were kind of good between certain owners of other companies, mm-hmm. SCW was renting a ring from a company I was working for. So I was able to get in the battle Royal for that, gotcha. but I made my debut as a ref. Um, then it was November of 21. Okay. Yeah. Cause I know, <clears throat> I know it was following the, the tag match that gave Terry Allen his uh, his presidency of Southland Championship Wrestling. Um, I actually remember the first night you were there, uh, you and uh, senior referee Flattop uh, were kind of reamed out by Terry Allen. Kind of weird uh, how he he pretty much uh, he 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 questioned and berated your res- uh, your referee um, experience 
without even like seeing you referee at SCW, you know. So it it was, it was kind of a weird thing, but I'm I'm assuming it had to be some kind of power move for Terry. Uh, we've kind of seen over the past few months c- certain shady things that kind of been happening a lot with him. Um. So I want to talk about uh, Arctic Takeover. I want to talk about the Creed and Scott Spade match. <clears throat> you were appointed by Terry to ref that match. Uh, why? Why do you think you were appointed to that match over senior official Flattop? Who, I mean, logically, and you know more about the business than I do. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that uh, that that's not correct. You've been in the business, as far as I know, since 2007. You're looking at 15 years uh, experience here. Um, I've come and gone. So you know better than I do. Is there an etiquette in referee decisions as far as main events? Because in my mind, you always go with the senior official. But Terry didn't go that way. So is there any logic in what I'm saying there? Or is it kind of just a pick and choose on who does what? Um, well, first, let me piggyback on something you said. Uh, I made my debut as a, a referee officially in 2007. But just for knowledge wise, as it and it'll come later, it'll be something important for later. Uh, it was actually 2004 I officially got in the business, started okay. training and everything. But um, I don't think there's when it comes to main eventing, I don't think there's really the, a special referee to be appointed because okay. when at other shows. A lot of the times I make the decisions that as a senior official, mm-hmm. I don't always do the main event. I let other guys do it because I like to give them a taste of what it's like. And what and if I'm not there or if they're at other promotions, they get it. They're, if they're a senior official there, they get to be main event. So I think it's equal opportunity for gotcha. um, Okay, so, so you, you being appointed by Terry Allen had nothing to do with, you know, his – his lack of confidence in flat top or anything other than just the fact that he had, he had a lot of trust in you and making the right call, which we saw at the end of the match that you made the right choice regardless of the outcome, because uh, there was a certain point where flat top kind of came out and made a three count for Creed. When in fact you made the three count on the opposite end for, uh, for Spade. <clears throat> Scott Spade ended up winning that match, becoming SCW heavyweight champion. A lot of people thought Creed did win the match because of Flat Chop's choice. But you corrected that. You let everyone know, hey, the shoulder was up. Spade covered Creed. Spade becomes the SCW champion. Regardless of what everyone was saying, uh, Terry Allen sided with you. Um, I think because of that, there's been a lot of speculation on and I, I maybe maybe I maybe I have I'm part to blame for that. Maybe I have to take some kind of blame for that, because I am kind of a conspiracy theorist kind of guy. I always want to look into. There's always more, and you know, in this business, there's always more than what meets the eye and what people see in that ring, um, whether or even in a video on Facebook, what people say or how people act. We, I mean, turns have happened. Uh, perfect example: Elite Pro when Vito Tomaselli turned on his brothers. Who th- who saw that coming? <laughs> Things like that happen so much. And first off, I'm also glad I get to make reference to Elite Pro. At least we understand it. Not a lot of people remember Elite Pro, especially who I know nowadays uh, outside the business because it, it was a brief period back in the day. I think Elite Pro was around for like five years or something like that. Um, so there was a lot of speculation on what was going on. Hunter Payne said himself in the last interview that – you know, if he if he has to go up against Terry Allen, he would. Uh, Terry Allen kind of, you know, he's secretive. He, I, a little, I, in my opinion, a little bit shady. I'll say it. Again, I don't know if this dude could fire me or not, but I think I'm just going to keep pushing the boundaries until I figure out if it's true or not. <laughs> <laughs> but it just it just all seemed too, co- too coincidental for the fact that Terry Allen becomes uh, SCW president. Uh, you show up at SCW right after the fact that, that happened. You show up the same day he arrives for his first day on the job. All of a sudden, he appoints you to be the SCW. Now, is I mean, is it wrong for me to kind of speculate that? Is that just too many coincidences or what? Because it, it, do, it does seem like there's something else going on. Was there a conversation with Terry before this match? Did he tell you, hey, listen, you're going to referee this main event. I want you to do this, make the right call, anything like that? Or 
Was it his announcement in the ring? Was that the first you heard about it? Oh, I I get the speculation because, mm-hmm. you know, after everything last week uh, with Hunter Payne and that interview, I'm like, ah, I kind of see it now. I mean, I've been around a lot of, you know, stuff. It's yeah. been crazy. Um, no, there was no conversation between me and Terry. Uh, as far as it went, me and Flat Top work together to come up with ma- what match assignments and he got the main event there i had no idea what was happening i just happened to hear my name being called i was getting ready to change honestly mm-hmm. i didn't think i was needed for the main event so i'm like okay i'm just gonna get ready for a possible fight and i'm hearing my name i'm like okay leave the gear on let's go out there and here i am the referee for the main event Okay, I'll get down. Because you gotta understand, man. Not a lot of the fans really know the back, you know, the what happens behind the scenes, what happens in the locker room stuff. So, as long as you, I I believe you when you say that there was no previous conversation to the fact that Terry made that call in the ring, you know, there. Because I trust that you wouldn't lie to me, because because of our history, because of because we're both mutual veterans in a way. Even though like maybe mine isn't as continuous, but still, when I say nine years, I, I count it. It's got to be there. <laughs> <laughs> the shoulder was up. You made the judgment call. Give me, give me some kind of idea of like. I mean, like, did you, did you know that, even though there, there was going to be outrage at SCW, like, you, you know that no matter what, you have to make the right call, even if it was. I mean, this right now, that I mean, that was your base show, who was losing their championship, to, for lack of a better term, their. You know, their enemy. You know, so now you, you're you in this hard point. You're in this hard situation of, holy crap, everyone thinks Creed won the belt. Everyone is happy. Everyone is excited. You're the only one who's seen it. And there's the footage out there now to prove it. So it's not like everyone's speculating, like, oh, he's just saying the shoulder was up. Because the footage is there. Steve uh, from Power Hour has said that himself. And he first to apologize. He was the first to apologize for you to it, uh, to you for it. Um, unlike him, I didn't accuse you of anything. So maybe, you know, shame on him. So am I a better person than he is? Yeah. Because he, he threw out the accusation before he had all the facts, but that's deep. Um, give me, give me your, give me your reaction. What were you feeling in the moment knowing they're like, crap, now I got to be the guy that says, Hey, listen, this kid did not win the SCW heavyweight championship. and has to go to Scott Spade, who was the winner. Um, and follow-up question to that, because I don't want to talk way too much. I want to give you some more time to talk to. Why do you think there wasn't a decision to restart the match? Uh, you know what? To that second question, I I don't know why that didn't happen. You would have thought maybe Terry Allen would have done it. As mm-hmm. president, you know, SCW, it, it's SCW's home, SCW's yeah. show. Terry Allen was in charge. Maybe he should have, but, you know, he put the decision in my hands. So when it comes down to it, uh, in the moment, like, I'm just sitting there after everything is going on, on, and one side of the brain, I'm cheering for James Creed, and I'm laughing at Pop. I didn't want to do it, but I I look at my shirt, and I'm like, I'm wearing the referee shirt, and... I try my hardest to be the best referee I can be, despite yeah. what happened to me at high voltage. I had to make the call. It, I take my job seriously. Yes, I had moments back in the day, about a couple years ago to be exact, I did do something wrong in the middle of a war, uh-huh. retaliation. But at that time, it was different. I was doing... What my boss told me. Yeah. Like, okay, well, I'll do what I got to do. And in a way, I didn't regret it because of what happened prior. But as for this time, I'm like, I take my job seriously with pride. I have to do this. It's going to suck. And I got up there and I just took every amount of, every ounce of energy I had. And I'm like, got to do it. Take the belt. And, (laughs) uh, Put, give it the spade and 
Yeah. It, it was history from there. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing that is unfortunate when it comes to, like, the fans and even some of the SCW, like, you know, um, originals and stuff. Like, you call it originals, whatever. Is regardless of this, I mean, the decision you made had to have happened. I mean, in order for everything to be legit, to be, to be official, and you had to do what you had to do. You know, you didn't have the choice to restart the match. You know, Terry said, "Who's the winner?" You know, and that and it was it was it, and you had to be honest. And you said, "Listen, Spade had his shoulder up. You have to give it to him." And I know a lot of people booed you for it. I mean, that kind of sucked. Steve uh, from the Power Hour being one of them, uh, obviously. Um, he he has he has a voice, just like just like he, I, I have a platform to get out there, and I didn't attack you like a monster like he did. No, he 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 started going on C Red. Uh, I want to talk about C Red too. I know I know that was uh, a topic we we're definitely going to discuss here. But instead of getting the facts outright, he let his personal feelings against Jimmy Blaze. Scott Spade and how uh, affect what he saw in your uh, ex- in your experience and your knowledge of being a referee. So as long as everyone knows clearly that I have been on your side the entire time and not that monster from the power hour, <laughs> I think I think I could be okay with that. Everything as long as everything points to Travis being the good guy, we're good. <laughs> hey, you know I did a favor for you, and you know speaking of favors, in a way. I think I did a favor for Terry Allen because had I not reversed the decision yeah. or called what I called, would Terry Allen be a hypocrite if he didn't reverse it himself after what he did by taking the belt off of Spade initially? Yeah, and that's the thing that I still don't understand. The whole stripping of the title thing just – and I get it, you know, that there, there, there was underhandedness on the – side of power to take that title from JPH. But I'm a firm believer at the end of the day that the referee's decision is absolutely final. Not a big fan of stripping titles from people. Hey, listen, if if you cheated and you won, hey, you did it. You, you, you got it. I mean, Terry Allen said in his, his own little uh, uh, state of union, whatever you want to call his video that he did, that, you know, he, he respected what he did, but he got caught, blah, 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 bullshit, whatever. But you have to respect the referee's decision no matter what. I mean, if 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 it's a free for all and you know you have presidents of companies doing whatever they want, then what's the point of having a referee in the ring? You just easily walk out there and say, you know what? I'm giving you the title instead. Give me it. Here you go. Um, but Terry is the president of SCW. He's entitled to do whatever he wants. He appointed you the referee of the match, which I think was a good decision. Nothing against flat top. All respect in the world to flat top, but you know he's 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 not. He's not as quick as he used to be. You know, you're a little bit faster. I mean, Terry mentioned it himself when he was berating you guys in the ring. <laughs> you know, flat top, you got to get down quicker. You got to get down quicker. It's like, it's like, there's that Earl Hebner jumping around, jumping over people, you know, doing belly bumps and everything. It's like, fuck no. <clears throat> Dude can only do what he can. And I know that, I think that played a factor. You're, you're, you're a little bit quicker. You're a little bit younger. You're able to, you know, really get involved in there. Because you're not afraid to get hurt. You know, we we went through training. We we got our asses kicked. You know, different different generation of wrestling. I talked to uh, Evil Gaines and Evil um, about how much training has changed over the decade. I mean, obviously, I I went to it, it was 2008. Compared to how the training is now, it's 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 a lot softer than it used to be. You know, I don't want to take anything away from Hunter Payne. Dude really does you know kick the shit out of those guys when they're at the ring. I I know firsthand. I've been to right? a few. Right. Nothing compared to the Tomaselli's, Jay Jensen, Mike Nolan shit oh, that happened God. at the Leap Pro Dojo. I I I think the first day, no, nah, maybe, nah, maybe about the second week I was in there, is where Mike wanted to show chops and shit like that. And I've seen, and Mike has probably one of the roughest knife edge chops I've seen in the business. And the fact he wanted to do that to me, it sucked. But the, the deep down, it, it hurt so bad. But I know he didn't do it as hard as he could. But that was the thing, too. It was like, hey, let me show you, and then just fucking go to town. Same thing with Hunter Payne. He's an overhand chop on me at uh, at his training. That stuff sucks. It does. Um, I think uh, I think the, the warm-ups are even a lot different. You know, I can watch them at Hunter Payne, and they get their warm-ups done in, like, five, six minutes. 
I think our first 30 minutes was all fucking warm ups. You know, like I couldn't I couldn't even count how many fucking squats we had to do, you know, before practice even started. But anyways, I got way off topic there for a minute. Uh let's talk about you know, it all comes together. It all comes together. It does, know? right? Right? This is all about fucking wrestling. This is all about you, man. Uh I want to talk about C Red. Uh, there was something uh, specific you wanted to talk about, so let, let's dive into that. Get, give people first off, tell people your relationship with C Red, the Power Hour, and kind of the response you want to give to some of the things he said. Well, me and C Red officially met at Elite Pro, mm -hmm. so it all you know everything at elite see everything is going to lead yeah. into elite pro anyway because what elite pro is to me is what windy city is to hunter Payne is yep. to terry allen so we got to think about that as we talk here because of something c red said that really you know grinded my gears a bit a lot yeah. actually um we, yeah we met at elite pro you know I respect him a lot for all the help he's given me then and now, you know. Um, we we were good, you know. We, we were yeah. good friends at that time. I it's like to think we still are, but I don't know. Kind of mm -hmm. questionable these days. Um, you know, we've actually been on opposite sides in the ring at Elite Pro um, twice. One, we were in the match together. You know, on opposite sides. We didn't really... I think we touched each other a little bit, but it was mostly me on top of Marche and then getting potatoed by Willie. <laughs> um, and then we were actually on the same side once. Yeah. Um, it was uh, Marche and Willie uh, teaming up with my tag partner at the time, uh, Buff Jones or Buff Kalula, whatever name he was using, uh... And so I was on the outside with C Red and um, Diamond at the time, yeah. and it was against uh, Team Taliban. Ali um, Ryan Project, I believe, was in there, and um, it was American Night. Right? No, not O'Neill. O'Neill wasn't there at that time. Gotcha. He was. This was that was at the beginning of uh, Team Taliban. Okay. So it was Ryan Project, Ali, and American Nightmare, who's better known as. Uh, Chad, Chad, uh, Norris Jones, Norris <laughs> Jones. <laughs> okay, real, real quick before we get before you continue with that, what is the Jones thing, man? Because I know there was Nubby Jones, Norris Jones, Martin Jones. I know we had a Brett Michaels. <clears throat> there was me, which I'm I'm still you know rocking the travesty gimmick. But what what is the Jones thing? I never understood that. Um, so I believe it was an LWF thing where like there were a couple Joneses, there was Mini Jones, uh Pledge Jones, Red Pock Jones, possibly. But so they used that idea and now everybody who came into the school and did something for the show, they were a Jones. So okay. Nobby was actually the original name they gave me. I, I forgot how it happened. It happened at practice once, you know how it goes. <laughs> and then and then they just added the Jones name to it, so it which was better for me because yeah. my original name when I first started reffing was Michael or Aunt, Tony Keats. Okay, thanks to Bill, thanks to Bill Patrick on that one. <laughs> so everyone basically got a name Jones. So there was you know Martine Jones who yeah. ended up being Ace Martino later on. Um, John E. Cash, he was gimmick table Jones. And then <sighs> got glasses yeah. Jones. And so yeah, it was basically any new student who got some sort of gimmick or mm -hmm. some way onto the show, they were a Jones until something else happened. Gotcha. Yeah, because John Johnny Cash, didn't he originally was gonna be Johnny O. C. Uh something like that. Yeah, because the whole, whole O. C. gimmick. Yeah, but then they stuck him with Kimberly Cash. And became the brother of, you know, John yeah. E. Cash, you know. Yeah, who was so uh, everything was about. Yeah, who was who was the uh who was the younger brother of Jay Jensen? Um, well, here's a here's the funny part. Hold on. 
Let me get my drink. <laughs> Originally, I was supposed to be. Okay. But that that got scrapped when um the whole thing that happened with Maverick and uh, him getting that bike bike motorbike motorbike accident or mm. something, and I was supposed yeah. to be Jake Jensen's brother. So they gave it to Cooley. Okay. And he yeah, actually yeah. became Mark Jensen, which was fine. You know, it was cool. Yeah. Yeah, see, I, I never made it, and I don't think, far enough through uh, wrestling school to get a Jensen, which it always it always bummed me because it's like what I tell everybody. It's like when I went training, I think I was there for about six six to nine months. I th- it, was, it, it feels like that's what it was. Um, <clears throat> I was there beforehand to help set up and tear down because, I mean, I, I mentioned it. I, I fucking, I, I name dropped my cousin, like, you know, like, you know, like, I don't even, like, you wouldn't believe I tell everybody, it's like, oh, do you know Acid? Mike Nolan? Yeah, that's my cousin. Just for the hell of it. I have no shame in that. Don't care. You know, that's pride I have. You know, 2013 Hall of Famer uh, fucking Mike Nolan. Yeah. But he came to me in, I think it was like 2006, telling me about Elite Pro Wrestling. They're going to start a school. He wants me to come in and train. My parents would have never let me in it. So I waited till I was 18 years old. I was like, hell, hell yeah, I'm in. I want to train. And that's where I met you guys. You know, I, I think there, there was you, uh, Norris, uh, Projects, and uh, OC were, I think, the first ones that were there. I think Kimberly might have been there. I can't really remember. Um, but I always loved how we had, like, those uh, those matches at the school. And um, I remember the one time there was uh, – we also did a – it was, like, an all-students battle royal where, oh, the, yeah. uh, where the winner was going to face uh, – I think they were going to team with uh, Jay and to take on the Tomaselli brothers or something like that. Martine ended up winning it. Martine, I think, was the first graduate of the school. Right. Uh, it was weird because I got a call that night from Mike telling me that I wasn't going to be in the uh, in the battle world because I wasn't trained enough because work, you know, kept screwing everything over and switching up my schedule. I can never make it. And to the point where I was where I got to I got to a point where I was just like, I'm just done. I can't I can't commit to it. I can't be trained once a weekend to do anything about it and at that time eddie was there um i can't remember what the hell he called himself then but he's like ej jensen now yeah he was uh uh something frisbee captain frisbee or something something like that yeah yeah i i wish i remember i mean i remember doing i remember having a match with him at the school i think i tagged with him once at school saying like we're the uh, to like we're the bastards i i think i think i tagged with him against Brett Michaels and uh, Norris. <clears throat> Brett Michaels, what's he been up to? He's doing photography or something. Uh, is, is anybody from Dojo still in wrestling besides you? Um, Eddie. Oh, yeah, that's right. Eddie owns um, no, oh, Northern, Godly. Lights. Northern Lights. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not many are around anymore, I don't think. Uh, Jack Carpenter. Um, uh, you he was know early from? Yeah, he was. Okay, he must have, he must have been after me. Probably. <clears throat> fucking EJ, fucking EJ Jens out there big time to me when I started up this fucking podcast. <laughs> that, that bastard. Go up to him and tell him, hey, yeah, man, I'm starting a podcast. We're going to talk about indifferent wrestling. I want to talk about your show. Oh, no, man, I'm good. Like, <laughs> cool. Gotcha. Whatever. Fuck. But, um. No, uh, let's get back to Sea Red. I don't want to lose that because that was an important thing we did want to talk about. Um, Sea Red says some things to you. Uh, do you want to share with everyone what he said? So he basically um, said, I was a knockoff of him and uh, Chaz Moretti. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, what am I knocking off, honestly? Oh, yeah. so I had a. You know, dress shirt on and a leather jacket and talking about, he's talking about, I was wearing slacks. Uh, first of all, they were actually cargo pants that turn into shorts. And what am, exactly am I knocking off? Who said I was trying to be a well-respected manager at this promotion? Yeah. Technically, I'm actually a tag team partner of Metalhead. He's just doing singles right now. Mm-hmm. So essentially your tag partner is going to be in your corner. 
Yeah. Am I going to dress up like Chaz Moretti when that's really not the gimmick I'm going for or the, mm-hmm. you know, the, the outfit I want to do? I'm going to go out there and I'm going to dress what I want, how I want. It's yeah. not trying to knock anybody off. Yeah, I got a baseball bat in my hand. There's a reason for that, too. So the moral of the story is this. Don't talk shit about something you know nothing about. You, yeah. It's all you do is talk shit, see red. It's all you do. You are a Zoom warrior, like Hunter Payne said. <laughs> and we'll definitely get into that. Yeah, it's. It, I and I and, they, and like I mentioned the in the show I had with Hunter Payne, I have all the respect in the world for C Red's uh, career and everything he's done. Um, when I when I was on the Power Hour, we talked about how I remember him back from like New Breed Wrestling Alliance back in like 06, 05 and shit. But something changed in him. And again, this this all kind of evolves around the the debut of Terry Allen as SCW president. C Red uh, betrayed Elite Payne, got this weird attitude towards a lot of people that it just none it, it, it's way again, it, it's way too coincidental, you know, that the pow shit, C Red's attitude, Terry Allen showing up, nubby, uh, I'm sorry, turtle. Is it cool if I call you Nubby? Can I? Because that's going to happen a lot. Here, here's the way I see it. I am not allowed to be turtle around Vito Tomaselli, so you can go ahead and call me <laughs> Nubby. It doesn't matter. Well, now, why is that? He doesn't like me being called turtle. I think he's just doing it to rib me a bit. He knows the gimmick is working for me, so I, I think he's just being Vito. I think Turtle's a fan favorite, man. You came out to the uh, Hallowmania uh, Battle Royal. Teenage Mutant Nubby Turtle, man. It's fucking amazing. Well, I was, but I was Chucky. No, okay, when when were you a Turtle? I remember you being in a Battle Royal as Turtle. You're right, at Hallowmania you were Chucky. But there was a Battle Royal where you dressed in a, was it DWA? Yeah. Was that DWA? DWA, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so you dressed in, I mean, that, that works. Uh, you know, man, Vito's not your trainer anymore. He cannot control you. You want to be turtle, you be turtle. <laughs> turtle uh, it up, bro. You know, Vito's Vito. God yeah. love him. Oh, I, I mean, I still, uh, I watch him and uh, I, for the love of my God, I can't remember the guy's name ever. When they do like the Elite Pro, uh, like watch alongs and stuff on Facebook. Oh, yeah, it was uh, him and Ben Jordan. Ben Jordan. Okay, yes. Uh, it, and that's another thing, too. I'm, I want to talk to you a little bit because you know way more about Elite Pro than I do, especially behind the scenes shit. I want to ask you a couple questions that kind of confused me about uh, Elite Pro, but we'll get back to it. Um, but everything is just way too coincidental on how everything's unfolding, and it all seems to center around uh, Terry Young getting control of SCW. So um, I don't know what is going on through C Red's mind. It seems it's like just it's an attack on all. Is this all stemming from Southland Championship Wrestling, or do you and C Red have an issue that relates to another company you guys worked at, or anything like recent, or is this is this happening since November that you showed up? Um, you know, I think there are other reasons for it mm-hmm. because I have called them out on some things, but I don't do it to disrespect people. Yeah. Well, let's okay. That's another thing I need to clear up. Yeah. I don't disrespect anybody that's been there before me. I have never done that. Now, the respect goes two ways. It that's doesn't true. matter if you are a 60-year-old man and a 15-year-old kid. If yep. this 15-year-old kid is being disrespect, disrespected for no reason, I think he has a right to tell this 60-year-old off. Now, I've known c right a long time. We have we've been in a ring together, even mm-hmm. battle royals at other companies. It is kind of funny though, when in battle royals, he'll we work together. Hey, why wouldn't you? Yeah, every man for himself. But hey, if it's the la- if it's you two at the end, cool. Yep. But then he would hit me once in a while, and then when I go to hit him, oh, he's gone already. Hmm, I, I had something fishy there. But at DWA. <laughs> How convenient is it that his ARC people are in the ring with them and he has no problem beating the crap out of me? But, yeah. hey, I think I turned the tapes a little bit because I knocked all three of them out. Hell yeah, man. ARC is something I, it's new to me. Like, I, I've heard, 
I've heard the stories from Steve, uh, from C Red. I know Xavier's mentioned it. So ARC is new to me. Is there a danger of ARC arriving in SCW? And if so, is it something that SCW needs to kind of be really cautious of? Well, technically they are in S- a- uh, SCW right now. But they're like, just like, not a, like officially together. unofficially there, yeah. We we don't see them officially, you know, mm-hmm. together, but in a way they are working to help each other. Because okay, you got C Red and Miles Mercer. Weren't they involved in a recent matchup not too long ago? They involved Angel. Yeah. So there's that. And both Hudson and Aaron Xavier were ARC at one point. And they talk about it all the time. But who who am I to speculate? Right. Well, that's what we do in life, man. You gotta speculate. If you don't speculate, I would never have uh, threw up the uh, conspiracy theory that you work for uh, Terry Young. <laughs> you know, Which I stated as a conspiracy, never said it was true. I conspiracized. Steve was the one who said that you fucked up. Remember that? Power Hour Steve was the one who said you fucked up. He said that. Which, by the way, how dare he not invite you on the show so he could personally apologize to you like publicly? You know, like, why is that? How is it that the Power Hour, who claimed last week that he's been inviting multiple SCW people onto that show that he stated he invited Hunter Payne 17 times, stating Hunter Payne told him he doesn't do podcasts, which is a lie because Hunter Payne has been on my show multiple times over four years. He says that he invites SCW all the time. Why did he not invite the referee from the main event championship match who was told that he fucked up in the final call, which he did not? How did he not invite him onto the show? Makes no sense to me. No, it doesn't. You would have thought maybe I would have some kind of platform to, you know, speak my mind, you know, tell how I saw it. I think, you know, as much as, you know, Steve apologized to me and we're, we're cool now. We are. Whatever, it is what it is. But I think he enjoys when I take shit from people, though. Especially from C-Red. You know, yep. C-Red would have been ripping me a new asshole that, that day. Regardless mm-hmm. if I had it right or not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but see, the thing is, like, as, as when you do podcasts, it, however you want to look at it, Sentinel, uh, whatever, Gino, whatever you want to refer to him, he has stated on multiple occasions that as a podcaster, I am considered a journalist, which means you have to be impartial. You have to be biased. You give everyone an opportunity to to say their side, and that's what we're here to do. It seems that Steve isn't allowing that to happen because if he did, he would have had you on the show the following week to say, hey, listen, we're going to talk about what happened on Saturday so it could be cleared, so the air could be cleared. Instead, he just mentions, oh, yeah, no, Turtle was right. We're all good without giving you an opportunity to explain the situation. And I think on the power hour side of it, I think that's messed up and it's not very professional because here at JFW, I give the platform to you guys to speak your mind. That way there is no, 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 some unbiasedness or see red there to sit there and say, no, nope, no, nope, you're wrong. You're dumb. No, nope, you stupid. You know, shit like that. Whatever the fuck he says. I don't know what he says. Um, he makes points. He might write down points and shit, whatever. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Well, yeah. Anyway, C Red. <laughs> so yeah, okay. So C Red, like what is what 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 do you want to say to C Red? I know he listens to the show. Huge supporter of the show. Uh, I guess. Um, <clears throat> so since the power, I won't allow you on their show to discuss anything. What do we want to say here on JFW to C Red on his attitude towards you? Well, you know, okay, we've mentioned Elite Pro. Yes. And as, and we are going to talk Elite Pro at any time because that was a good time in our lives. Oh, yeah, uh, it's, coming, it's coming up here in a moment, yeah. Right. <laughs> but it, as much as we mentioned it when we were supposed to wait, it be, it's part of this important thing I'm about to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned, how long ago did you start there? About, you know, yeah. it was 2008. Right, <coughs> yeah, you're that's a long time, years. right? Yeah. We're 14 years. That's almost yeah. 20, right? Almost 20 years. It's close, yeah. How about let's do some math here. 
2004, that's mm-hmm. when I first started training. Uh, August 2004. Yeah. It's two, 2022 right now. It'll be 18 oh. years in August. Yeah, man. That's, that's close a long 20, time. That's close to 20 years, ain't it? Yeah. So this asshole C Red decides to comment, <clears throat> and I quote, Little boy put in the work for almost 20 years, then talk to me. Okay. Almost 20 years. See, Red? Really? You're going to disrespect me by calling me little boy. First of all, I'm almost 40 fucking years old. Let's just throw that out there. I'm going to be 37. That's close to 40. That's close just enough, like, yeah. Just like 18 is close to 20. Mm-hmm. And to say I didn't put in the work? Bro, you were there at Elite Pro and all the abuse I took. Yeah. Okay, I won't say abuse, but it's close enough. The beatings, the hard work I put in. So don't tell Dude, me. Shit. I can't. Rem- I can't remember an Elite Pro show that you didn't ref. That at one point or another, somebody knocked you down. So I'm. I'll, I'll agree with you on abuse. You got your ass handed to you because Elite Pro was you know one of the more vicious aspect, one of the more vicious uh, independent wrestling uh, businesses that there was. They got in the ring. They beat the shit out of anyone in their way. Corporal Robinson was probably one of the most scariest motherfuckers I've ever met. Former Elite Pro champion. I think you, uh, you, and maybe it was it was you and another referee. It might have been Norris. <clears throat> you guys refed that dog collar tag match between Team yeah. War and the Tomaselli. So yeah, Norris. yeah. So you took some abuse, you know, and you, you fucking survived through it. So I just I just wanted to say that. Go ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Honestly, though, how is somebody who is well respected, who wants respect? Gonna tell me that I don't put in the work that I didn't put in the work. Yeah, I started in 2004. I was originally trained by Brandon Bishop, who is, I guess, known in the Midwest, you know, legend. Yeah, and then and then I went to Elite Pro and got my ass beat by the Tomasellis, Mike Nolan, Jay Jensen, hell, even Hunter Payne came down for a little while. So don't tell me that I didn't put in the work, <laughs> especially mm-hmm. when every time I go out there to ref. I give it 100%. Main event, middle of the show, beginning of the show, I've done it. And then every time I try to make a comeback to wrestle again, I put in the work. Yeah. At a school a couple years ago, I busted my ass. Made somebody who, you know, it's hard to please believe in me. Yeah, granted, he went took his ball and went somewhere else and forgot about me. But point is, I can make people, you know, believe in me. Yeah. All they got to do is see what I do. And they did. And they believed in me. Hunter Payne believes in me. He's helping me out in the short amount of time that I've been there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's a tough guy to please. You know, you've really got to impress him. Oh, yeah. So, see, Red, you stop <coughs> bitch. Seriously. Who the fuck are you to say shit about me? Put Not putting in the work. Man, get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Go fuck yourself. How about this? You can talk to me when you get the balls to get in the ring with Hunter Payne without your people, without the ARC. You probably won't, though, because you know if Hunter gets in the ring with you one-on-one, he'll retire you in a second. Get the fuck out of here, motherfucker. Before we dive into Elite Pro Wrestling, I want to talk about Power Entertainment. Have you ever had any experience or did you ever have to work with Jimmy Blaze or Power Entertainment? Uh, no, I haven't. That's probably okay. one of the promotions that I never got to, you know, work for. I had a chance to when Elite Pro shut down because mm-hmm. Vito was going up there to work with the students. And we were yeah. actually going to bring that Dark Match Pro uh, thing we were doing at the school up there. Yeah. And then, you know, life happened, you know, well, I got you. work and everything. So I couldn't go. And so I never got the pleasure of working for Pow. I I went well, pleasure, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I should say that. But no, I never got to work for Pow. I've been to a few shows, you know. Mm-hmm. I got friends up there, or at least I think. I don't know. Right. Well, Polly, Polly's up there. I don't know. There we're go. friends, but you know, he's just like Vito. So. Yeah. So that was another thing too. I remember people talking about Polly like over the last couple of years, and in my mind, I kept thinking like. 
Like, the guy looks familiar, but I don't know who the fuck Pauly is. But I guess I used to know him as Brandon. Yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, it's the weirdest damn thing, like, when I, because obviously my, there was a gap, that I mentioned before, there was a gap between Elite Pro and JFW. And it's, I mean, it's it's almost a 10-year fucking gap. You mm-hmm. know, it's just like, I mean, I, I went to independent wrestling shows, but they weren't Elite Pro anymore. Elite Pro was gone. Uh, SCW wasn't SCW yet. It was still CSW Southland. So whenever I went to shows, I mean, there were there were odds and ends shows here, small ones like in Indiana that I don't even think are even around anymore. I can't remember the hell name of it. It was in a church. I do remember that. Uh, I went out to Northern Lights and stuff like that. But when I started up as uh, JFW, I was like, I want to get involved in as many companies as possible so you know i went out to powerhouse wrestling on pontiac scw and champagne or not champagne chabance uh arw on indiana you know uh, northern lights out in godly i kept going to places and when everyone said it you know i was trying to figure out who owns southland championship wrestling you know and i got to meet a lot of the cool people and i got to meet some wrestlers that i've known i i remember seeing LWF wrestlers. Uh, I somebody's like, oh hey, you know, you want me a you know a great wrestler or a veteran, you know, you should go talk to Hunter Payne. And I look over, and it's fucking Balthazar, <laughs> and, and fucking you know, cam, you know camel pants. And I'm like, well, what the hell? Like, where's the all black? You know? And <clears throat> I see Lunatic, and I'm like, I haven't seen that fucking guy since he wrestled for LWF. Um. But it it was crazy because after seeing everyone and, you know, I, I, I still talk to Norris like once in a great while. I know he's not into business anymore. I think uh, I saw a lot of, I mean, I, I kind of not keep tabs on you guys, but see, I, you know, the shit that you guys pop up in from time to time. Crash Tested Wrestling, I think I've seen you in. GPW, I think you're involved in at one point. But no, I was never there, but the I'll admit Project Revolution. IUWA at the time, probably. Maybe that was it. There was something that you were in. It could have been just, uh, maybe it was crash tested. Maybe I'm just thinking crash tested then. But I don't know. It, it, was, it, was, it was just cool to kind of like, you know, catch up with a lot of people who were at Elite Pro. <clears throat> uh, Willie, Trauma, you know, Soul Touchers and all of them was pretty cool. I still, I still hear about Acid Jazz uh, from time to time. I guess he's still in the uh, company. A lot of people I know is no longer there. Uh, Jay Jensen no longer wrestles. Maverick. I think the Tomasellis are done except for Pauly. Uh, Mike just had a match at DWA against Pauly. And I pissed and I missed it. I'm, I am so pissed. I didn't, I, if I didn't have a booking that night, right. I would have been there and I would have been politicking my ass <laughs> somehow to ref it. With, right. And I still have my Elite Pro ref shirt. I would have worn it. Yeah, that's so cool, man. I uh, there was, it just sucked because I know Mike mentioned that he was gonna try to have one more match. I mean, especially when he came back for that tag team match, he just was like, he's like, if I give one more match against Polly, I'll be happy. I can be done and shit. And I was like, well, when you know the match, when you're gonna gonna happen, let me know so I can get there. And then I found out like two days later or some shit. I was like, hey, listen, this is what's gonna happen. And I found out on Facebook. It's like, well, I gotta fucking work. There's no way I can make it up there and shit. So if anyone out there has video footage of that match, send it my way because I'd love it, to see it's it. It's out there. It's Is on it out the, there? the DWA YouTube page. Perfect. I'm going to have to check that out, yeah, because I I really wish I wanted to see it live. Because the thing was, that was, seeing him in that tag team match was the first time I saw him wrestle since Elite Pro, since Team War. And I didn't get to see him in a lot of single matches in Elite Pro Wrestling because he was with Sin, um, yeah, Sin, in uh, Team War. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about Elite Pro Wrestling. Uh, unless there's anything else you want to share about SCW, Terry Allen, C Red, Steve, um, I I mean, nothing really to say anymore about C Red. I said what I said. Yeah. I mean, someone else chimed in on that post. PL Myers, you, I'm sure you know him. He talked mm-hmm. about how I'm disrespecting C Red. You know what, dude? You haven't been relevant since PCW. You came back <laughs> for a short time at Chicagoland Championship Wrestling, whatever. You know, I have the respect. I respect him probably the biggest out of all the managers because of when I worked with him at PCW, it was so much fun. But mm-hmm. you got old guys in the Chicago Connection 
the only one that's uh, really relevant or doing anything is Scott or Scott. Uh, what's his name? John Hudson. Why did I say Scott Hudson? Think of that WCW <laughs> announcer. Um, uh, yeah, John Hudson, who is phenomenal. He can beat anybody. And then you got number twenty three, who is uh, Steve. And, and nice having his back all that time, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you really have his back. You know, but, speaking speaking of managers, there was a photo that was released. Uh, a lot of speculation came about, and uh, involved you and uh, a vanilla gorilla. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's that? What, what what what's the issue with you talking with him? I met the guy, nice guy. What's the issue there that Steve has? We had a we had a feud back at Global. Okay. And when the I was actually feuding who I'm teaming up with now, Metalhead, I was with him or you know, wrestling against him and he injured me for a short time. Legit. I legit had an injury. My arms went numb for a little while. Wow. And you know, Johnny Wilde kinda, you know, used it against me. Whatever. And everyone's like shocked that I was talking to him recently. We just happened to be in the same establishment, and we were talking. Was it business? I guess we'll find out, or we won't find out. Stay yeah. tuned. Right, see, that's the thing. I mean, like, if you're having a personal conversation and somebody happens to snap a photo, what business is it of anybody's? Exactly. You know, it, it, it makes no sense. It, it, it's insane that people have to sit there and, like, oh, shit, two people are talking? It's got to be something bad. It's like, why? Why? Just because two people who have years in the business are trading a conversation automatically has to be something bad? If that's the case, then you know what? Fucking Terry Allen should be brought up on war crimes between this uh, this SCW POW shit when he sits there and gets in the way of, uh, you know, uh, Blaze and Hunter Payne, which is the biggest issue I have with Terry because for the guy who's supposed to be president of a company is standing in the way of a monster of Hunter Payne to sit there and kick the shit out of Jimmy Blaze, who's caused nothing but problems for SCW, blows my fucking mind. Steve doesn't want to talk about that, though. He wants to talk about a photo of you and a manager just chatting it up. Right. Makes no sense. And I like Steve. I, I will go on record and say I have no problem with Steve anymore. I've grown to respect him as a, 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 show, a show host. But he has his priorities mixed up way too much for it to be logical anymore. It's just he just he he wants to pick the narratives that best suit him for like views and listeners and followers. It's insane. And yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it's, it's just goofy to me. I mean, OK, so me and him, we, we're good friends, yeah. regardless of how we act towards each other. In fact, that that night I got hurt. He was the first one to slide in the ring. And I've never seen a big guy like that slide into a ring so fast in my life. I saw the footage. It was, you know what? I give him props for that. While, you know, the owner of the company was playing grab ass in the locker room for about 10 minutes and then finally came out. So I give, you know, all respect for Steve. Yeah. But, it, you know, he does do the, that kind of shit. You know, he he picks and chooses some things, but not the important things. And he yeah. still, to the, like I said, before, you know, before, you know, talking about the connection, he praises them so much. But where were they when he got stuffed into a trunk? Where no. were they when he got hit with a kendo stick? You no. Know, why are you going to praise guys? that are not there but you're gonna shit on everybody else mm -hmm. that weren't that were supposed to be there don't give me that shit steve you no. need to kick these guys to the curb because that's all they do is talk just like your partner c red talk 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 yeah well it, it, it's, a, it's a perfect example of what happened at high voltage when steve invited you know pow to show up at high voltage challenged them to show up and when they did just kick the shit off everybody and then all of a sudden, two weeks later, you know, you got Jimmy Blaze commenting on one of his Facebook posts about how I was like, well, it's just weird how you left high and dry and no one was there to protect you. And then Steve's having a conversation with him like nothing's happened. Like when he said on last week's show that they have a newfound respect for Scott Spade. 
I mean, like it, it, it blows my mind that it seems like <clears throat> he will sit there and be at the forefront of whose ever narrative best suits him. Exactly. And it's it's unbelievable. And, and he wants to sit there and question me being an SCW guy. I have worn this shirt for the last four episodes of JFW because I love SCW. They gave me an opportunity to get involved in the independent business. And I respect that. I don't need to be in the forefront of any fight because I, I I haven't really stepped in a ring and done anything, honestly, my whole career. I've never had a match that was videotaped or in front of an audience. I We've done the matches at the dojo. If there's footage of any of those, I would love to see them, but they're probably fucking long gone. I actually had a VHS of a lot of them, and I can't find it for the life of God. me. If you ever find it, if you find a fucking match of mine, let me know because I will release that shit on YouTube as proof to people that there was a point where I knew what I was doing. But it's like I had to explain to Steve, and I explained it to a lot of people on my show. It's like the difference between me and Steve is Steve will run his mouth, get his ass kicked because he will run into it. I will run my mouth because that's what I'm supposed to do as a podcaster, and then I'll hide away because why get involved? I don't want to get my ass kicked. Steve could go and get his ass kicked all he wants. He could have eye injuries all he wants. He could hit with candlesticks all he wants. <clears throat> if he wants to be a puppet for somebody like Terry Allen to go into the ring and re- re- take a title away, that's on him. He got hit in the back. That's on him. And he wanted to sit there and say that February is going to be my last show because I got no support from SCW. He did it to himself. It's like, like I said, I like Steve. But he just picks and chooses the narratives. And that's why I had Hunter on. That's why I wanted you on. Because the narrative needs to be seen from all sides. I appreciate that. And and it's unfortunate I'm not going to be able to witness whatever happens to Steve on the 26th. I have a previous commitment at Crash Tested Wrestling as I go against Chris Miller. Chris, I remember my first show at Southland Championship Wrestling. Miller time, Chris Miller gave me a beer. It was amazing. <laughs> nice guy. He vanished after a while, but nice guy back then. This was like 2015. I hear he's uh, kind of douchey nowadays. Yeah, yeah. I mean, him and his partner choke slammed me when I had the stripes on. Again, more disrespect towards the referee. Right. All I did was my job, but all, <laughs> but I thanked them at the same time. Because they kind of knocked some sense into me because now I want to wrestle again. Yeah. It's just, don't it's taking, don't sleep on it in SCW. Don't sleep on that. This tag team partner is who again? What's that? This tag team partner is who again? Chris Cody Miller? James. Cody, Cody James. James. God. Yeah, huge fan of Cody James, too. I really wish I, I, you didn't get beat up by people I liked. It, uh, it really puts me in a tough spot here, Nubby. <laughs> you know what? You got a hey, you like who you like. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Right. You know, Cody James is a good, you know, good worker, great athlete. I mean, for a big guy, he can jump. He just did this recent recently over one of the tallest rings I've been in in a long time. He jumped over the top rope and Mm -hmm. onto uh, Eric Schultz. It it was amazing. Yeah. Speaking of rings, I, I need you to vouch for me. I need you to tell me flat out if I was just being a bitch or not. The Elite Pro Dojo ring has got to be one of the hardest fucking rings ever. Is that just me? It, no, it it it's it the sucks. second worst ring I've been in. Second worst. What's the second. first? I really don't want to. I'll tell you after. I don't want to put them okay. on blast because of the ring. Do I? I, I, lo- I love them. Is they there a good get, chance I know them? You you know them. It's just I love them so much. I don't want to shit on them like God. that. Even since, I mean they shit on their own ring too mm-hmm. at their school, but I don't I don't want to do that. Yeah. So I'll tell you off there. Did I ever tell you that I actually know the history of that dojo ring? Like where it came from? I know where it came from. I was okay. actually, that was the original ring I trained in. Okay, was that the prime ring? Like primetime wrestling ring? Or am I thinking? I believe, I believe that was used at primetime wrestling. It was yeah. at the school that I first joined. Gotcha. Now, I'm trying to remember, like, because they had... Where, okay, first of all, I'll just ask you, where where did you first train at? What town? Was it Piatone? No, it was, um, what's that town? 
because there's there's like three of them. They all sound the same. Uh, Payless Hills, I believe. Payless Hills. Okay, because I remember I remember primetime wrestling being a thing. They had one show, um, and it was Marty and Jay who ran it, and they trained out of a building that was in downtown Piatone. And I don't know if the ring they had there was the same ring they used at the show or not, but I know the ring they used at the show. Uh, when I talked to Marty, he, it was one of the best rings to ever wrestle in. But the problem was, is he had to use plywood, not, you know, two by tens or whatever the fuck, two by twelves. So I think when that ring went to the dojo, they didn't get plywood. They had the two by tens and it just weighed everything down. Yeah, and- that sucked. And those springs were not the greatest. I remember having to go and get the grease. So I get this big tub of grease, and I'm just fucking lubing it all over. And nope, still didn't work. Even taking out some of them to me, mm-hmm. do, nope, didn't work. That ring was bad. So when you got into Elite Pro Wrestling, who was there to begin with? I think I came in, I uh, had to been like the Fall of 2008, I think, is when I got there. So you got there in, like, 2007? 2006. 2006, okay. Maybe maybe I got... No, I lied. I think I came in in the fall of 2007. I think it was, like, right after I graduated high school, so in the fall. Um, When I showed up, like I said, it was you, Norris, Martin was there, um, Ryan, and John, I think, were the ones that were originally there. I don't remember if Kimberly was there, though. She was there uh, off and on. Yeah. Now she made it to be a manager. I know she wrestled for a while after oh, yeah. uh, after Lee Pro closed. Obviously, you're still here. You're still around. Um, did you did you actually have like like continuous matches and stuff on Lee Pro, or did they kind of just like uh, pigeonhole you into refereeing? So, what happened is one day, I don't know. They they were having issues with the reps. They mm-hmm. didn't want to uh, bring in like, you know, top tier guys or whatever to actually pay them a lot of money or some shit like that. Yeah. I forgot the actual issue. So Jensen one day, just out of nowhere, because they were talking about refs, I just happened to stand there. He's like, wait, do you want a ref, brother? And I'm like, <laughs> I I didn't. I just instantly said yes. I said, you know what, this will get me on the show, and it did. Yep. In, in, in a way, I was thrown into the fire because they didn't really train me. They just... Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, all right, go ahead. Next show, you're reffing. And then we just went from there. Yeah, there was a, <clears throat> there was one point, I can't remember what the hell it was. It might have been Jay. But somebody came up to me and was, t- it, had, it fucking had to be Jay. I don't think the Thomas Sellers really liked me. Now that I think about it. I don't know why, but for somebody that's remember them not liking me. But I remember, I think Jay came up and he was talking to me and Mike about me reffing or something like that. And Mike was telling me, was like, he's like, why would you make a motherfucker this big, like, referee? It makes no sense. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm a big dude. I'm about 6'2". I think at that time I was only, like, 3'10". Now I'm fat, but um, it made a lot of sense. I did videotape a few. I did videotape that dog collar match. Still to this day, one of the greatest fucking uh, matches I've ever seen on Independence was War versus the Tom Sellies. Mm-hmm. A little confusing at times of how to change the links on people and shit. Oh, God. But, so here's here's the funny part on that one. Yeah. Let me drink. Um, so when in the middle of changing the links, and I think it was for the second time, or mm-hmm. it might have been happening once, but I just remember I'm trying to go as fast as I can. Now, yeah. in real life, I do struggle doing things when I'm under pressure. Yeah. I shake. It, it's normal. It happens to a lot of people. So here I am trying to get this chain together and I'm shaking and I'm missing it. I'm trying to get it to lock and it's not locking and then it's coming out and I'm just shaking as it's coming. I'm like, come on, they're going to kill me. Let's go. (laughs) Because you know, you know, at one point, if you, if you messed anything up in Mike's match, you're going to get that bro. What the fuck in the back of the, in the fucking locker room at the end of it. Here's the funny thing. It wasn't just him that would do that. The Thomas Sully's would do that. In fact, I still get shit to this day about one fuck up that happened during <clears throat> Galen Vito's Iron Man match. And I oh. still have yet to hear again to be able to explain that one. Because explain it, man. 
This okay. is the platform. This is it. Let's let's hear. Let's hear what they blamed you for, and you tell me what really happened. This is your platform. Well, actually, let's start before that because yeah. frustrations happened before that. It was Jason Hades and Polly Brandon at the time. Mm-hmm. I forgot who they were probably fighting the Soul Touchers or something. And there was during a hot tag or whatever. They Polly was not the illegal the legal man. He went for the cover. I didn't count it because he wasn't legal. Well, I get to the back after they do, and I just hear fucking nubby. I'm like, oh, what the fuck did I do now? I thought I did okay, and I'm hearing that I that I fucked up the momentum by not going for the count. I'm like, you told me to do my job. Yeah. You know, this whole time you're telling me to do my job, and then the one time you want me to do something different that you didn't tell me, that's on you. But no, yeah. because I'm the youngster, I got to take the ass reaming. And then mm-hmm. I was pissed off for the most part. And you got Joey Eastman back there just trying to rub it in, but trying to console me, so, as you, I guess he could put it, tell me, don't worry about it, don't think about it, stop <laughs> thinking about it. Are you still thinking uh, about it? <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> leave me alone. Just leave me the fuck alone. And then so we get to the match, it's the Iron Man match. Everything's going good. Yeah. And they Vito was pinning Sal and he pinned him. Okay, one, two, three. There's a point. Then at the set <laughs> they, didn't get off of they wanted me to count again, so I did. One, yeah. two. Now I really thought Sal got his arm up. So I didn't count the three. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, oh shit, I'm fucked. And I just hit the three again. <laughs> so ever since then I Vito gives me shit for it because they say I fucked up the match, but really I didn't because that was in the middle of the match. So to say I didn't, I fucked it up was kind of, you know, fucked up there. And I'm like, well, do I get a chance to talk about it anytime? How many Mm -hmm. years? And during this whole thing with them on One Gimmick World, you know, Mm -hmm. they're doing the watch alongs. And I figure, okay, maybe they'll have me on to finally tell my case. No, that became a. Not, nothing happened after that. God. I remember, uh, oh, geez, what the hell was it? I don't know if you're going to remember this. I've told this story several times. <clears throat> I don't think it, it's probably not even a story worth remembering. But for me, it really did bother me. There was a there was a show. I want to say it was in Frankfurt um, at like some kind of gymnasium. And uh, the one thing that Elite Pro did that I don't know if a lot of schools do that if you're training, you're responsible for setting up and tearing down the shows. We had to be there early morning, pulling the ring out of the dojo, you know, lock it, and it was a different ring. It wasn't the ring we trained in. It was just one that was just stored around the fucking ring. Yeah, that was the show ring. Yeah, that we, we had to load it up, get to the venue, set it up, go through the show, tear it down, bring it back. It was from like like eight to fucking midnight and shit. And then we would hang out afterwards and wrestle around and fuck around and shit like that. But there was one show, and I want to say it was in Frankfurt, that uh, they were bringing in a photographer who's coming in on a train. And somebody was <laughs> supposed to go pick them up. Yep. I remembered. I thought about that this? not too long ago. Gotcha. Oh, my God. So nobody went. But I remember the Thomas Selly saying, hey, somebody needs to go pick up so-and-so at like 11 o'clock or noon, whatever the hell it was. And I was like, I'll go if you just tell me what train station is that. Because, honestly, I just want to get out of fucking setting up chairs. I hated fucking setting up chairs. But I was like, I'll go pick them up. And then they just fucking walked away from me. I was like, okay, well, maybe they'll send somebody who, you know, maybe more experience in the business, whatever. So nobody wanted to go pick this dude up. And I can't remember who the fuck it was. I want to say it was Vito. Because I, I think out of the three, Vito was uh, the one that had more, uh, a little more t- temper. Had a bad, had a better temper than Sal. Um and I remember us doing like squats for nearly hours on fucking end. Oh, you remember that, right? I mean, oh I'm not crazy. Yeah. I actually got lucky though. I had to go get ice when you guys were about to start that. It was fucking insane because he came up there. He's like, he's like, how come no, no one picked up blah blah blah, and everyone was fucking quiet. And I literally looked at him and said, like, I would go. I said I'd go pick him up, but no. He's like. Fucking get your gear on. We're gonna fucking start doing wild workouts. And I was like, oh god damn it. So we all changed. I know we ran up and down the bleachers, and then we just squat. I want to say we just squashed like forty-five fucking minutes straight. Mm-hmm. It was fucking brutal. 
Um, but yeah, no, I remember telling somebody that story, and I can't remember who the fuck it was. But like, nah, there's no fucking way that that happened. It's like, why would you? Have, it's like, why would you have your ring gear with you if you're just setting up a show? Because I was taught by Mike. I think everyone said you always have your gear, even though I yeah. knew I would never be in a, a match. Always have your fucking gear. Never, you never say never. Never know. Right. Oh God. Uh, who who else was in the dojo that I'm trying to remember now? So Johnny OC, I remember watching at a, a wrestling show in Bradley a couple years after Elite Pro. But he's out, right? Yeah, he's been done. He hates the business. Why? What, what, what happened with him in the business? I don't. I don't know. I wasn't at the time. He was still doing it. I actually was out and hated the business for a short time. But oh, that, that was not. But you know what? That I blame myself for that. Mm-hmm. I, that was all me. But you know, I think he just had some bad times with people. Probably some of the vets, you know, treated him a certain way. I don't know because he shits on a lot of vets. Does he? Like, for like he yeah, for yeah. no reason. Like I was actually promoting a global show, right? And first he shit on the name, but I think he did that because of the owner. Gotcha. I think he had an issue with the owner. But it just it felt like I had he had heat with me because mm-hmm. the only time he would say something is when I made the post. It's like, dude, why are you coming on my shit for it? What did yeah. I do to you? I thought we were cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, me and him had a recent thing about because of some mask issue. But it, whatever, he he's weird. I, I still I like the guy still, but dude, you're fucking weird. Get the fuck yeah. out of here. Yeah, I don't see the thing is with me is like I remember I remember there was a, I was like eight or nine years old and Mike was having I think it was a birthday party. It was either a surprise birthday party for him or a surprise birthday party for his girlfriend at the time. And he had like all these LWF guys there. <laughs> Fucking Jay Jensen, uh Billy Wack. Supreme, uh, I can't remember that. Uh, whoever whoever was managing uh, Maverick, I can't remember that fucking dude's name. Magnificent Mike, maybe? Anyways, there was a bunch of fucking wrestlers there. All cool guys. All of them fucking cool. CM Punk wasn't there, but I think that was like later on in the era. Um, all cool dude. I don't recall once ever talking to anybody at Elite Pro Wrestling that wasn't a Tomaselli, Jay Jensen, Mike, or anyone in the school. Uh, Corporal Robinson, uh, fucking Maverick. It's just like for some reason, like there's, I don't know if the opportunity never came up or I was just too intimidated at the fact because you do hear stories about how people acted. And realistically, I don't know if my cousin listens to this, but I hope he doesn't take it personally. My cousin was a dick to me, like an absolute dick. And I love my cousin. Mike is an amazing dude. He let me train for free at fucking Elite Pro, which I think why Thomas Sellies hated me. Because they came up to me, asked me for dues once. I'm like, oh, I don't pay dues. Um, probably the wrong thing to fucking say, but ah, well, what did I know? I was a kid. I was an 18 year old fucking kid. Um, but in my mind, I was like, well, shit. If fucking my cousin's gonna treat me like a piece of shit, what's these people who don't know me gonna treat me like? Jay, awesome fucking dude. Always great fucking dice. Sal, awesome. Vito, I don't think really liked me too much. Mike, always a dick. But Mike's always been a dick. But that's what makes Mike Mike. Um, you probably know better than I do. Who actually owned Elite Pro Wrestling? Because I hear like five different fucking people owned it. The real, the actual owners were Mike and Jay. Okay, because I heard I heard uh, Thomas Sellies were owners. Uh, that Ben guy was an owner. Like I, I kept thinking to myself, like I remember Mike saying that he's getting a company, but it just seemed like there was more to it than that. There, so, I just never so, so it was Mike and Jay, the original owners. They started it. They were fronting the bill. Vito, Sal, probably Brandon too, and Ben Jordan were all together with them, you know, making, you know, booking it, putting all mm-hmm. the cars together. Originally, Billy Wack was running it as, you know, the booker. Billy, yeah. Okay. Well, him and Mike had a falling out. I wouldn't say a falling out like to the point where they hated each other. They just had yeah. different ideas and direction mm-hmm. of the company. So that's when Vito and Sal took over with Ben 
And but yeah, but but the main owners were Mike and Jay. It was their decision to shut it down. Gotcha. What was uh what was your favorite venue at Elite Pro? A lot of it was Oak Forest, but do you remember like one particular venue that they did that you liked the most? Uh I'd have to say, even though we were there once, it mm-hmm. was the Frankfurt building. I really it was like the huge. I was I was gonna say the same thing too. I really liked the Frankfurt building. Even though I couldn't walk after that one. <laughs> oh god, that that was the worst fucking day. <clears throat> Just, the Oak Forest one was good. It, mm-hmm. I loved that one because of the history. More companies ran there. I was surprised that fucking uh, they never got in trouble with Corporal Robinson smoking inside that building. I think they did. Did they? I think yeah. they got a, some some kind of reprimand, but I don't think anything came up of it. But yeah, I mm-hmm. think something happened. Cause I remember a discussion about it. Yeah. Who's uh, who's your favorite? Uh... Favorite uh, elite pro uh, heavyweight champion. My favorite champion was it dysfunction. Nah, nothing against oh. dysfunction, but I'm Corporal gonna say Robinson. Corporal Robinson. Even though I have a little bit of a soft spot for Osiris mm-hmm. Congo Kong because well he beat the shit out of me and my partner. Yeah, I, I liked I like Corporal Robinson. I think he was the more entertaining of the uh, of the list of people. Who, do you remember who the final uh, Elite Pro champion was? It was Osiris. It was Osiris. Gotcha. And then uh, well, they, they had the tag team champions, which was Team War. And then I think they had a television title too, right? Yeah. I don't remember who the last champion was. I, just I thought maybe it was Ali, but it could have been yeah. Pauly. Yeah. Has anyone other than Ali and Ricochet come through there that's been on TV that I can't remember? Ricochet was there. First he was Ricochet, and then he came as his other gimmick, uh, Helios, that he used in Chikara. Gotcha. Yeah, because I remember Ali. I actually remember those, uh, those uh, who the hell was it? Lillian Garcia has a podcast uh, that she actually had Ali on. And uh, they are talking about how uh, when he first started wrestling as Mustafa Ali, <clears throat> it was a terrorist kind of fucking gimmick. You yeah. know, and he changed that because one night at an Oak Forest show, uh, some kid was yelling obscenities at him because of the gimmick, and he changed it. I remember being at that show. I re- I remember that moment. I think I was videotaping that moment that, like, you could kind of see, like, he turned, walked. That kid said something. I can't remember what the, hell the kid said, but you could see him turn back. And, like, his demeanor changed, like, 100%. And I was like, holy fuck, okay. So that is the same Ali. Because, obviously, he changed a little bit over 10 fucking years. And then Ricochet, I didn't really put two and two together because I think back in the Elite Pro, he had hair. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, I was trying to remember who else. Fucking Mike, uh, still still to this day, is convinced that CM Punk stole his high-knee bulldog corner spot. <laughs> Which, uh, I mean, I, I don't, I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, fucking, you find something that works, you fucking use it. Right. Uh, shit. What else? What well, else happened? Let's the- think about this. Punk named his dog Larry, who's Billy Wax's real name. So there's that. <laughs> God, I wish I saw LWF when Punk was there because I think that was the end of it. Did you ever get the LWF book or ever read it? No, nah, I'm not much of a reader. So I think having the book would probably be a waste. I mean, it might be worth money someday, but no, nah, yeah. I'm not much of a reader. I've heard yeah. about it. I'm waiting for it to come out in uh, in theaters. That's usually, <laughs> that's usually how I read books. <laughs> oh, God. Who else Who else was that lead pro that I'm trying to think of? Hey, what, you got any stories from the dojo you want to share? Um, Shit. It's so many that I can't even really... It's hard to remember. Yeah. I would love uh, I would love to get Chad on here and talk to him too. Like just just have like a reunion fucking thing with as many people as we could find. Because I mean, I, I, okay, let's let's do this. Who came out of the dojo that actually had a spot in Elite Pro? We know Martin, uh, you, uh, Kimberly Cash. I, I mean, outside of refereeing, has anyone else? I, I, um, fucking uh, the guy who played uh, Jay Jensen's brother, I guess, did too. Yeah, yeah he did. Um. I mean, even though he didn't get the chance to 
wrestle at Elite Pro, but Justice Jones, he did some good shit down in Dreamwave. Which one's Justice Jones? <sighs> shit. Tall, very athletic. He had a bit of an attitude, I'd say, at the time. Mm-hmm. But, that might but have been I nice don't think he, I don't, yeah, probably. It was towards the end for sure. Yeah. I think he came in with Jack Carpenter, so. Gotcha. Yeah, I remember uh, when I left, when I left, um, Eddie was there. Fat Eddie. That's what I see. That's what he came in as. He came in. I don't remember what Chuck Frisbee or some shit like that. That's what it was. Chuck Frisbee. Chuck Frisbee. Yeah. He, because he came in and he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm Eddie. You call me Fat Eddie or Chuck Frisbee or whatever. And I'm like, what the fuck? Uh, I liked him. He, I, I think I worked more with him than anything because he was fairly newer too. And he came in with one of his buddies who ended up quitting. Um, but when I left, uh, Chuck Frisbee was still there. You were there. Brett Michaels, Chad Norris, Projects, OC, Kimberly. And there was another girl there. She was kind of nerdy. I think she was one of Chad. Um, Julie. Classes Jones. Yeah. yeah. We I had remember. another girl before her. That was Karen. But she ended up leaving sometime. But she was one of the originals. Gotcha. One of the original five. Yeah. And shit, when I was training, I had the long hair, too. Yeah, one you of my, did. One of my favorite moments of, sc- of school, there was, a, I, there was a tag. I think it was the same tag match. It was me and somebody versus Brett. I always tagged against Brett Michaels. I don't know why. So did I. But, <laughs> But there was a time where I threw him off the ropes, and instead of like doing a spot, I just kind of leaned up on the turnbuckle and waited for him to stop. And um, he came over, did something in the corner. I think he did like a shorter tackle. I fell down, my like toothpick fell away, and I had like an extra one hit it in my ear, and I just fucking razor ramoned him. I think that was my favorite spot at one point. Um, no, dude, it was so it was so much fun. I would I wish we could find the videos from those matches and shit. It's on a VHS somewhere. It's just you know, it's been a while since we've seen the VHS, so I don't know where the hell it is. God. So there, there is actually one story that yeah. was kind of funny. So I think it was before you started, because I'm not sure if you remember uh, Lumber. He was Lumberjack Jones. I forgot his name though, and his his friend, uh, fuck, Polish guy. His name was Pascal. So we were at the school, and now, mind you, none of the trainers were there. It was pretty much, you know, do what we want that day, yeah. as long as we don't get hurt. And during a match, it was Pascal and Lumberjack Jones. I forgot his name. See, everyone's a fucking Jones. And you guys are like your own little Manson family, man. Right. <laughs> so uh, during the match, Pascal did something stupid. And he injured his ankle. Mm-hmm. So he was done for the uh, day. All of a sudden, Nolan comes in. I think he was with his uh, his wife at the time. She came mm-hmm. in with them. And, you know, he was just seeing how things were going. I don't know if they were going out, whatever. And would you just see Pascal stand up like nothing happened? <laughs> I, there was a guy who faked an injury once. I don't. I don't think that was the same day or the same situation because I, I know. I know Saturdays were kind of just for us. Like, like somebody had a key where we'll just get in, kind of do our own yeah. shit. Um, but somebody did something on one of them where like they're complaining about their back, and they're like, "Oh no, I, I gotta, I gotta lay down. I, I can't do this. I can't do this and shit like that." And so we and we kind of finished doing like our warm ups, this that and the other thing, and we started working on promos with ourselves. And he's like, "Well, I think I, I think I can do some promos. I think I, I think I can at least do that." And he just got up, jumped up in the ring, like like nothing was fucking wrong. Started doing the fucking promos. Like I'm thinking to myself, I'm like either your back got a lot better really fucking quick, or you bullshitted everybody. But it's I don't know. I I mean I dude, I had a lot of fun with it. Like I said, I mean. I, I wish I stuck with it because I mean, realistically, if I, I mean, if I committed to it, man, I'd be, I'd be in the business for fucking 14, fucking 15 years. You know, who knows? I could have been, I could have been fucking SCW heavyweight champion right now, you know, or the former elite pro, but nubby, I appreciate fucking going down memory lane with you, man. This is fun. 
it, this was good. It, we haven't talked to Lee Pro in a long time, you know, and I appreciate you let me, you know, talk about what happened and let me yeah. get everything out because I think it needed to be said. And finally, someone appreciates all sides of the stories, you know, right. not just and, one-sided. Right. And that's the thing, too, is like when, when we initially decided to do this, the idea of talking about Elite Pro wasn't really on the table. We're just like, well, we have to talk about it. But the whole focus was to kind of get down to the idea of people thinking that, you know, you're, you have ulterior motives what you're doing, which in reality is you're just doing your fucking job. And you get people like Steve who kind of put that mindset in people's heads, regardless of his apology or not. He once said, like, oh, turtle fucked up. It's like, no, get the facts straight. Be like Travis and not jump to conclusions. Unless it's about Terry Allen, who, I mean, there's just too much fucking shit going on to not believe it. But tell people where they can find uh, some of your future bookings and stuff. Because I know you got quite a few coming up here. Yeah, um, I'll be at uh, Chicago Style Wrestling next week, you know, at Franklin Park. You can go to their Facebook page for that information. Tickets are always at the door. Pre, You can get them ahead of time. Uh, It's in Franklin Park next Friday night. Um, then, uh, I have crash tested wrestling on February 26th as I wrestle Chris Miller up in Hobart, Indiana. Uh, you can, uh, check out their Facebook page for all the information there. I would be an asshole if I didn't, you know, promote SCW, <laughs> even though it's the same day, hate to take fans from either show, but you know what? You like what you like. You go to whatever show you want, make mm-hmm. sure you're there. To see what happens to Steve, if anything, if he even shows up there, who knows? Um, you will see me on March 5th at Pow Entertainment and somehow, somehow, oh. some way. I'll be there with Steve, of course, unless he decides to not pick me up after this show. But hey, you know what? <laughs> you know what? It's his own fault. He could have gave you the platform first, mm-hmm. he, could, he could have offered it up. And yet, here it is, travesty, doing what he does. That's another thing, too. Like, I can't believe he was surprised that I'm on season four right now. It's like, motherfucker, yeah. Hell yeah, I am. I should be on season six right now. But we took a couple of hiatuses. That's on me. I've been around for six years doing this, man. God damn. And that's a long time to be podcasting. That's true, you know? And I, it, it's weird because oh, people have been coming and going. Uh, I don't know if you saw on Facebook, but uh, Steve Doris is... Uh, currently no longer with JFW. He's uh, we're taking some uh, we're taking a mutual agreement upon his leave. Dally's been busy, but she's gonna start doing a lot more interviews. Dizzle J is, I don't know, fucking, I don't know. I guess never came back from the big snap by Thanos. I don't fucking know. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it, it's just like any wrestling business. People fucking come and go and everything, but the constant is travesty, and he's not gonna go away. Travesty has been in the fucking business for years. Hey, you know what? You earned your keep. Right? I'm probably the only guy that has more merch than fucking wrestling matches. Hey, money, 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 <laughs> money. <laughs> I will well, say this, though. You know who else did earn his keep? You know, despite some of the stuff we said about him. Yeah. I'll give Steve. Because yeah. he did earn his keep, despite what people say. Yeah. He was well. He didn't. He wasn't here. Long. Shut the fuck up with that. He's been around enough in the profession he's in of announcing. Mm-hmm. He went to school for it, so he's in the wrestling business. Deal with it. And if he's part of the shows in some way, deal with it. Get off his back. Yeah. You're well, still and, an and that's why. And, and that's where, like, I had to kind of like rethink my feelings about the guy because what he does, he does very well. Commentating, announcing. Uh, I think he's what well, he's the general manager of Crash Crash Tested Wrestling. No, he he's actually he took his ball and went home. Oh, what a monster! I thought they I thought they reoffered him his job back. He, uh, no, that was that was uh, Chicago style. Chicago style. So CSW, yeah. he's yeah. GM. There's too so, many C's, man. Too many C's. There's, there's a lot. See, that's another thing about Elite Pro, man. I I, I asked my cousins like. So are you EPW? He's like, no, fuck that. We're elite pro wrestling. Exactly. Like no initials. And I'm like, I like that because there's too much shit out there. That's just the three letters. I mean, granted, yeah, I'm JFW, but I just do that for the gimmick. 
But the fact that Elite Pro, like, no one, no one knows it as EPW. It sounds like no, crap. Sounds like garbage. Elite Pro Wrestling. That's why I also love that he know, he called it a dojo, which I think they also like he shared it with some kickboxing training or something like that. Mm-hmm. But everyone else, yeah, you know, like the wrestling school. It's like fuck that. Call it a fucking dojo. Give it some fucking balls, man. Yeah, amazing. But yeah, everything circles around back to Elite Pro, the best it, company. It was God, it was so amazing. I, I still gotta get Mike on here because I still want to hear his story. Um, and maybe get some more of his feedback on Elite Pro. Because like, I mean, like that's the thing. Like, I mean, I had a falling out with Mike in like 2008, 2009, where we didn't talk up until like last year. Um, which I'm glad we got kind of like recommute reconnect and everything. I told him I wanted him back on the sh- on the I wanted him on the show to do an interview. He's all for it. I just got to figure out that time because, God, between LWF, Elite Pro Wrestling, and everything in between, there's got to be some amazing stories in that. Mm-hmm. So, um, but again, Turtle, Nubby, however, whatever you refer to as, uh, you'll always be Nubby Jones to travesty. Uh, but Butler Jones once. Butler I was Jones. A butler. I was a butler one time. Oh, God. When? Was that Stager? That sounds like a Stager thing. No, this was actually... Now, here's the thing. Uh, there was an ARW, but, but not the same one that is now. It might have some kind of affiliation. Okay. But I did one show there, and I was happen- I happened to be with Kimberly Cash, Dave Allen, and uh, fuck, what did he call himself? But his name is Tony. Um, he was the manager, and I was their butler. For one night. And I actually ended up wrestling that night because one guy decided he was too good to do a charity show where he, did, oh, he didn't man. get paid and he walked out. So I ended up, you know, taking the spot in a tag match. Mm. Fuck, man. You remember the uh, Elite Pro versus IWA Mid-South show? Yep. God, that was a great show. Fucking uh, Cash Inc., Trauma, and uh, Balthazar. God, that was good. Oh, God. Dude, I still got, I, I think I got like a dozen fucking uh, Elite Pro shows on DVD that are down in yeah, my Yeah, I still right got now. them. I just still pop them in from time to time. Yep. Yeah, I did like Dysfunction. I think Dysfunction was a cool, uh, oh, cool he was champion. Good, good, good gimmick, you know, mm-hmm. good guy, good champion. I just happened yeah. to like Corporal Robinson more. That's all. What about the uh, guy who was it, the water boy? Oh, uh, Mike Horning. Oh, God, that Horning. dude. <laughs> I, I was I was actually happy that I got to ref his last match when him and Tony Rican went at it at Crash yeah. Test a couple years ago. That was a good good match, and I was honored to be part of it. Mm-hmm. Jason Hades, I remember him. He's still around. I actually beat him in 2019. Choke on really? that, and I did it clean. Who uh who are the uh the Ring Raiders? You remember them? Oh the um, the Ring Riders. The Ring Riders. One of them was Hades, right? It could have been one time. And then there was Troy Walters. There might have been uh, uh, CJ Esparza was one okay. with, his, with his partner, whoever. I forgot his name, but he teamed with him at, at Zero Gravity. But, yeah, he was part of it. There were any small guy that worked with us was, <laughs> was a ring rider. Uh, sex, drugs, and wrestling? Oh, God. Oh, uh, man. You know, the people in Franklin Park hated them. Why? Why is that? Oh, I think they were just so stuck up and, you know, probably prejudiced because they thought they were, you know, gay, I guess. I don't know. And they said, get the, get, said, get the fuck out of our neighborhood or something. I, I heard them say that to one of them or some shit. I don't know what... What the actual issue is, I just remember them saying, get the fuck out of our neighborhood. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're not coming back here again. God, I, I liked it, though. I mean, like, after Vito uh, turned his back on everyone, he went out. I, I, I liked them. I mean, I think they were oh, a yeah. great trio, yeah. Yeah, they were. Um, who else was there? Uh, the old-timer Jeff King. Oh, man, that was a great gimmick. I had that dude. Uh, I interviewed him at a powerhouse show on Pontiac. And that dude lives his fucking gimmick because when I when I put this microphone up to him, he just yelled into it like he was mouth fucking it because he just like didn't quite understand how a microphone 
or a podcast works. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know if I could use this. It just sounds so, like I'll give, I'll give you. A, I'm going to give you an example of this. So watch your ears. I'm going to win this match. Uh... So he did that. <coughs> oh, fuck. <coughs> he did that for like 20 minutes fucking straight. I don't know how this dude hasn't destroyed his voice box. But I'm sitting there thinking, like, there's no way I can fucking put this on there. It's too loud. It's too distorted. But I'm like, you know, fuck it. That's him. That's the gimmick. Yeah. Fucking amazing. Dude, there are so many people that I enjoy coming through fucking Elite Pro. Like, every everyone was, I mean, like, it, it's like Mike said. He wanted to get the best talent that he could from across the country. Because it wasn't just, like, Illinois. Mm-hmm. You know, and he pulled in LWF guys. He pulled in Windy City guys. I mean, fucking Nightbreed was there. Uh, for a short time. Um, but it was cool, man. This was fucking cool. Love talking yeah. to you, man. Yeah, I'm glad. I, fun. I'm glad I did it. Yeah, I, it's unfortunate that it took so long to get you on here. You know, you know, life. It's true. <laughs> life happens. It is true. Well, I'm going to find, if I can make it happen, I'm going to make a show where it's you, me, Jay Jensen, and Mike fucking Nolan. And we're going to talk about fucking Lee Pro for hours. It's going to be amazing. All right, I'll I'll be on top of that for sure. Yeah, fuck it. Oh, we gotta yeah. figure this out, guys. Make sure you check uh, on Facebook, see where Turtle's going to be. He gave you a bunch of dates. You better have written them down. If not, go back, listen to him again. Check out his amazing talents as a referee, as well as amazing talent as a wrestler. Multi talented dude does it all. You know, unlike Steve, where it's like you know he the only two things he does is talk and beat up, but it's whatever. Make sure you check out all my shows when they are downloaded uh, or available on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher, or uh, you know, just search any platform where podcasts are available. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you're looking to get on a platform to get your point or your story across, like I've been doing with Hunter Payne, uh, Turtle, or anyone else, we would love to interview anyone who is independent wrestling. Reach out to us at jfwpodcast, uh, yahoo.com or just message us here on Facebook. Uh, special shout out, I guess I should mention since I got paid the fucking bills. Shout out to CarterComics.com. If you are a comic book nerd and you love comics, whether they be graded or raw, Carter Comics is the best place for you to go, whether you're looking for something to hang up on the wall or to thumb through and read. Sign up for Carter Comics, fill your card up with all their amazing comics. Use the promo code FREAKNET, that's F R E A K N E T. You'll save 15% on your entire order. If you're a big fan of auctions, they also have four different auction pages available. Go to CarterComics.com, scroll to the bottom, click on one of their many uh, eBay sites, and uh, start bidding. Use uh, write JFW in the comments and let them know that you sent us here so their money's not being wasted. Also, check out BallWash.com for all you pro wrestlers out there who need something to clean themselves up after a hard-fought victory. BallWash.com is a one-stop shop for all your hygiene needs. From head to toe, from hole to pole, when it comes to your wiener, nothing will get you cleaner. They got shampoos, conditioners, body washes, both in bar and liquid form. They also have handy wipes to clean yourself up, as well as bar guard if you're a big uh, fan of not chafing your thighs. Use it. It goes on like a lotion, dries as a powder. Use the promo code FREAKNET at checkout to save yourself 10% or maybe it's 15 I don't know. You'll save money on your fucking order. It's been too fucking long. I can't remember. Boo it. <sighs> All right, Nubby. Thank you again for being here. I do appreciate it again. Uh, that's all I got, guys. So this is the Just Freak of Wrestling JFW Podcast. I am your Travis C. Uh, host. Well, this is a horrible fucking ending. I am fucking. This is a horrible fucking ending. Holy shit. But look, I don't edit anything. So if you bear with me, I'm going to do the ending again real quick. Is that cool? You cool with that, Turtle? Hey, I'm good. Perfect. Go ahead. That's all I got, guys. So, as always, I am Travis T. And thank you for listening to another episode of Just Regressing, the JFW Podcast.